right on time, don't we? Right. So if you haven't signed in, you better sign in quick before I get to that sign-in sheet. And I'm, I'm running. I'm running. So we started off with 108, um, but that was just in the phase one. There's actually going to be four phases in Symmetry Bay. Um, phase two will start with 34 homes, and after that, it'll be um, 108. So altogether, there'll be 255 homes. We're, we're done. All different levels of entry on that are pretty much all just for um, Bay. So we're in the low 400. So okay. you see here we offer three floor plans. We offer 1715 is a three bedroom with a loft, two and a half bath, two car garage. 
Um, then we have two four bedrooms. So the 1795 is just a four bedroom, and then the 1865 is a four bedroom with a lot. Okay. All two car garages. So that's going to be the entire hundred yes. and how many homes? 108. Oh, 255 total okay. for the four phases okay. all together. So right now in phase one, we have about 26 homes left to build. Mm -hmm. um, we are on an interest list, but we have move-ins as soon as April. Yeah. Um, as far as um, the whole cadence area, so if you guys are familiar with symmetry, there's five different communities inside symmetry. Um, it's um, Bay, it's uh, Symmetry Falls, Symmetry Summit, Symmetry Trails, and then it was Symmetry Meadows, which we just closed out as well. And that's all DR Horton. And that's all DR Horton on that street. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many models, how many model homes do you have in each community? Um, model homes, we have, we modeled two of the plans, but there is three different models all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so with ours, like I said, it's 1715, 1795, 1865. In Falls, it has a 2433, the 2665 and the 2988. Um, and then summits is 3,034 and then trails is 1417, 1319, and they have a 1345 plan, which is um, trails is the townhomes. Okay. Yeah. So and would these be, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the lowest price is the highest, like is this the base price? Yeah, this is the base price. So we have a couple um, lots that are oversized, about 40 foot backyard. Mm -hmm. Our lot premium GCR are between 10 and 15,000 for those. Yeah. But there's only a few, honestly, right now. Um, when we go into phase two, there will be more of the larger lots because it's going toward, so I don't know if you guys know Symmetry um, Bay um, backs up to the wetlands. Okay. So once we get farther back there, then the lots will, are huge. So I'm 60 foot, 40 foot, just depending on where it is positioned inside the community. And are you selling primarily spec homes or? or spec homes, yes. Okay. So um, DR Horn is kind of phasing out of the Express, which is essentially our spec homes. Right. What you see is what you get. And as far as like um, cabinets, it's just one cabinet color, one granite color. And we're kind of just going to back to the DR hoarding. Um, but we still spec out the homes, no matter what. So there's two different cabinet colors, the white uh, cabinets and the gray cabinets. And then we have two different granite colors, like the light gray and then the darker gray. But we actually just, you know, we just choose one and we put it inside the home. Um, 18 by 18 tile, and then we do the carpet in all the living areas as well. So that way your um, clients are doing 30 to 45 day closes, you know what I mean? So we don't, um, we don't sell far out, so if they needed to move, let's just say in June, we, would, we basically would have to wait closer until that time to actually move into the, um, to actually pick a lot and move into the home. So I was told you have a giveaway, huh? Yeah, I so do. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we just did, with okay. the, and we'll send you that uh, that sheet. What, what do you got? Um, I have a twenty-five dollar um, Denise gift card because Denise is right here. So yeah. that way you're an Who's been to the new Denise yet? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for brush yeah. 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 All right. So, winner is number 14. I think you need to reshuffle your phone. You need to reset your phone. There you go. Are you serious? I never read anything. No, no, you can't say this. And, and she also brought uh, what, donuts? Donuts are, are out there, but yeah, it's my time. Thank you so much. And then I'll leave some cards if you guys have any questions or anything like that. What about the prices of the townhomes? So they start in the mid 300s. Is there a backyard? No backyard, just a courtyard. Yeah. So the only ones that have um, backyards would be Bay and the Falls and Summit. Yeah, I'm going to call you. Townhouses? I missed that. That's trails. Yeah. The trails is townhomes. So they're two story townhomes. What is the HOA of townhomes? HOA is 169. 
but that's the it's the fifty five dollars plus the inside HOA for the actual community. Mm -hmm. um, it's not big, no. But you know, some homes have to have those extra insurances because they're attached products. So you know, for the firewall, so that's why it's a little bit more. It's going to be uh, the pool. No pool. No. Just in case it's pool. Okay. If you have any other questions, take a card. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Have a great day. All right, next up we have uh, Trisha from America Home Shield. Yay! What, what you got? Hi. Well, Hi. first off, I've met a lot of you because I've been around, but the dates have never coincided because I started in October and it keeps landing on holidays. So this is the first time I've gotten to be at a sales meeting. What? I know, right? Um, and I had a lot of fun. You guys, do you see? I got to use my little P card and buy some stuff. You guys recognize it from yeah, the summit? Yeah, yes, I'm super excited. And I have some giveaways. Okay, so the first person that can find my sheet, I gave you guys the 2004 calendar. My phone number's at the bottom. And you might still have my number. I have Tony. If you guys remember, Tony retired. She's a great friend of mine. She's hopefully on to some exciting things. But the first one to text me, I've got a Realty One cup who can text me so they have my number. What's your name? Sorry. What is my name? Trisha Ferris. I love it. It's Earth. I'm Trisha Ferris. I'm up in the Northwest. And here's her phone number right here. Here's my phone number. It's on the piece of paper. You might have had me in. It's Tony. I have the same phone number as Tony did. I just took over her phone. Oh, okay. First person. Let's see. I got the first one. Hold on. It is Tony. Hello. Who's the 619 number? There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now everybody that texts me, text me your name because none of my phone numbers attached to it. Their names attached to it. There you go. What is your name? Joshana. Joshana. Thanks. Um, so just quick five second background. I've been around real estate for 10 plus years. I did social media and agent marketing at a large brokerage. Then I ran operations at a brokerage. Um, and then I did TC work. So um, I'm super excited when Tony retired because it kind of all fell into place to have kind of a regular gig. Oh, okay. it came up as Tony. Yep, like, yep, 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 yep. So I have Tony's little number, so change it to Trisha. Okay. So if you have quick questions, you have it. So I kind of understand what you guys are up against and how you guys work and all of those good things from being around the industry for a long time. Boop. Thanks. Okay. Uh, home home insurance or home warranty is super important. This isn't supposed to be up there. I guess I was supposed to do that fast. But uh, the reason why, and I love this from a brokerage, is you want to cover yourself, right? I just had somebody that didn't put full coverage on a home warranty, and the poor agent felt so guilty because it's less than 30 days after the close that they ended up buying a dishwasher for the client because they didn't get enough coverage on the warranty. Okay, my big point is always your numbers. Okay, so my second gift, don't answer more because we just did this. What page is the home warranty question on your RPA? Six. Five. Five, who had five? Five, did ask me? I got one someday. Okay, okay. What, what are the three things it asks you? Super important, these are, these are things you're talking to your buyer about before you go into contract, right? Who's gonna buy it, who's going to buy it, and what's the limit? Buyer's paying for it, and how much? And what's the other really important question? Who is it? Who's going to be the Perfect, I love it. How much, who's paying for it, and what company, okay? A lot of people always think, oh, I'm just gonna get plus. I just wanna make sure they have Whatever your company is, the, the middle package, so they at least have the appliances if appliances are included, which it will include appliances even if you purchase the appliances after the fact. But the number is 815, okay, for a single family residence. You want to get Shield complete, and I think I'm going to have a slide on that here in a second, or 690 for our condos. Um, and you want to get them the full package. You want to be able to pass the buck to us when something goes wrong, because one in four are going to call us in that first. 60 days and ask for something to be fixed. You want to give them the full option. 815. 815. And we do not have any price increases coming this year that I am aware of um, at all. So 815. And that's because it covers you all. You can completely pass the buck. Your dishwasher broke, call American Home Shield. Your AC is acting funny, call American Home Shield and you don't feel guilty because you didn't get enough coverage for them or whichever, which way. Um, okay, next. Shield Complete. So this is why I want to talk about Shield Complete. American Home Shield is awesome with our comprehensive top package. Pass in the buck. It has the unlimited refrigerant, all the modifications and permits. 
Okay, a lot of people get upset with me because they got the silver package, right? The middle, Shield Plus, but they need a new water heater and they're gonna get hit with non-coveds, such as the modification to bring it up to code and the permit pooling. If a licensed plumber does it, it has to have a permit, a permit pool. The Plus will buy you the water heater, but we're not gonna pay for those modifications. Shield Complete covers it. It gives us littler and littler, little, 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 littler ways for any sort of denial or for non-coverage. Because we know home warranty can be difficult, right? But we wanna give my company and every company as little room as possible to have any of those issues. Okay, so what's the magic number? 815. 815, okay. Um, okay, so I understand how different agents work different ways. I've worked with agents for years. Some need to text me, some need to call me, some need to uh, put it in themselves. They don't want to even have to ever talk to me, and that's fine too. I'll meet you I call. how you want to be, yeah, how you want to be met. Call's always going to be the hardest, because guess or what? Or text, say text. Yeah, text is fine, because about till 1 o'clock almost every day I'm doing this. So um, email or text is great. But if you are pretty proficient, um, you can get on proahs.com. That's how I used to order all the warranties. Um, it's super easy. It just associates yourself with the Realty One group. Um, and then kind of brings you over and you can put it all in yourself. But I'll meet you however you want. So I want to meet your style of working and be a support to you. I've talked to lots of buyers um, and lots of sellers lately. Would you, I, I'll keep going as we get my monthly meeting, but seller's coverage, we offer seller's coverage. We have new construction warranties. You know your numbers. And the big, 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 big difference between our major competitor here in the market, I just want you to know is we do not have any sort of escalations for the first six months of your warranty. So competitors in town, if you put in a claim in those first six months, they're gonna ask for an inspection report, especially if it's something super high cost. They're gonna ask for an inspection report that it was working, right? Because what's the rule of home warranty? Rule of home warranty, it has to work once for a buyer. Okay, it has to work once. But sometimes, it doesn't necessarily work once. And that competitor is gonna ask you to prove that it worked with an inspection report. The only reason I will, I will ever ask for an inspection report is if I try to overturn a denial. If they try to say, oh wait, no, something, something, I'm like, nope, 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 look, it worked. We don't ask that to approve you to get you in the door. Yes? What's the complete coverage without the appliances and the air conditioner? I mean, how, what package would that be? Without, without appliances? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the appliances already have their warranty. We um, don't have like one that's Samsung gonna, or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna really have one that doesn't. The Shield Complete is the most comprehensive. Um, coverage. It does, you can't really take off the appliances. Now, some people will just do, um, go back one for me, Mark. Yeah. Some people will just do the Shield Essential, which is the same as our seller's coverage, mm -hmm. and that doesn't include the appliances. If you just want to cover your water heater, your plumbing, your electric, um, and your AC. How much is that package? Oh, uh, I'd have to look. I think it's 510. I don't know my numbers perfectly off the top of my head, but yeah. So I think that's kind of the big thing. Thank you guys. We Oh, and the other big real thing that's exciting that kind of came on board with me is um, we have a real estate concierge line. Because I'm in these meetings, and you guys have escalations, right? Everybody's like, oh, the buyer called me. They're frustrated. That kind of that stuff. We now have a real estate concierge line. It's American-based uh, during normal business hours that you can call to kind of escalate a problem or pay for something or have questions just in case, like I've been sending them to them. They call me right now, I'm like, okay, hey, call this number. That way you guys are not having any sort of delay in what you need done. Yes, Charlotte. I just want to give you a testimonial of how awesome you are. Oh, thanks. Uh, last week, right, I came to you after Summit or during Summit, I think it was even two weeks before, and I said, I have had on my to-do list for over a year to buy a home warranty for my personal residence and my rental next door, right? And I said, Tony gave me a quote, I thought she did, and I couldn't find the email, blah, blah, blah. Literally, I texted you the addresses, and within, I don't know, a couple hours, you did what you magically do, and I had the warranties by that afternoon, and I had paid for them, and everything was great. So, I happened to work with Trisha before when I was at Simply Vegas, and she, what were you there? Operations director, yeah. She, yeah, so she was fantastic, and now she's in this role, Thanks. and I just want to say that it was like instantaneous, and I haven't made a claim yet, which you know before I get my money back, but uh, you should use her. Yeah, on. thank you. Here, here, here's that for the testimonial, right? Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, I would just say my style is I need to work on sales skills. I'm probably going to have to go to some of your prospecting classes because I'm prospecting you guys to turn you over into loyal Trisha fans. Um, 
but I am a taskmaster, so those kind of follow-throughs and orders and, and checking on your agents and stuff, I'm a really good advocate and too, but um, I'm gonna keep working on sales because I get nervous. This Thank is you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did a great job. Oh, hey, and uh, Daisy, Daisy's not here. She won this, so I'll give this to Stephanie to give out. Okay, how about one of these? Who needs something fun for their office to hang up? Uh, oh, somebody new, okay, who wants something new? Okay, how about my new friend in the back corner? Here, that with a cute office. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks guys, thank All you right. guys for your yeah. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm gonna be talking really fast and going through these slides really fast. So this is our, our uh, upcoming rev up. Tomorrow is closing South Bay Compliance Wise. That is going to be in Summerlin. And then next week we start on module one and uh, that's Wednesday and then module uh, two is Friday. Module two is an important one, why? Because you're I'm teaching it. Yeah. So anyways, that's right here uh, next Friday. Um, Monday is President's Day, and uh, office will be closed. Um, by closed just means that Stephanie and Laura and myself won't be here. Um, you know, we all do really expect you guys to work, even though we're not working. <laughs> All right, ABR class. Who is familiar with what ABR is? It stands for Accredited Buyer Representative. It's, it is a, a, a NAR designation. This is really, really, really super important right now because of what's going on in our industry. Our industry is, is moving toward buyer Pay the, the uh, buy, buyer's agents commission. So Lee Barrett is an amazing instructor. I've known him a lot of years, and he has agreed to come down. Oh, we're paying him a lot of money, but he's coming in and teaching the uh, ABR designation. It's March seventh and eighth, and it's only a hundred and fifty dollars. Mark, um, I did see that there's a yearly. Okay. For, for most designations, yeah. there is a yearly to, uh, to keep that designation. So uh, again, it's, it's all day, March 7th and 8th. It's only $180. Um, there's three ways to pay. We, we accept cash, we accept check, or Zelle. So if, if uh, and what you need to do is you need to uh, register with uh, the uh, SW software. admin. What's that? SWAdmin.com. Right um, what if you register and then something happens, a life event, and you have to cancel? <laughs> Would you get your money back? Or? I don't know. I don't want to register to take the limited spot, but I would like to do this. But my daughter's going to have a baby anytime soon, and she needs me there. So I just, I'm really, uh, I'm really reluctant to, um, to register for anything, just because there's the unknown. Yeah. So can it be carried over to someone else if she can't do it? Then I she, buy her. Yeah, she can probably sell it to another agent. I know there's probably limited seating, right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, seating is limited to thirty-six. Thirty no, to thirty-six. How many? Nineteen. We have nineteen spots left. So they're they're going quick. Is it here? Again, it, it is right here in this office. Yep. Yeah. Um, and 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 <laughs> breakfast and lunch will be served. Um, so that we get, we can keep you guys trapped here, never leave for, for two days straight. Um, I'm not talking fast, am I? Anyway, I, I, I spent a little bit of time on this because I, I really, really believe this yes, is important. Good. I will be here uh, both days. Uh, all right, a food truck, the Brothers, it's out there in the parking lot, way out that way. Uh, refer three, get uh, free for a year. Uh, those are our stats. Look for the stats in the uh, newsletter and on our social media. Months inventory is down again, down to 2.6. I'm hearing more and more multiple offers. Who did I just talk to? Yeah, uh, 15 offers and sold above. Who was that? It was just today or yesterday. Anyway, multiple offers. So 2.6 months last last uh, week was, uh, or two weeks ago was 3.3. So uh, we're, we're getting into more of a seller's market again. Um, it's one of those things, careful what you ask. Although, 
you know, rates had been trickling, trickling down for a while. They have ticked back up just a tad bit over the last uh, week or so, but I anticipate them to come down again. Um, Rock title, anything? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Any prizes for us? Your prize is getting to hear the talk. Right. <laughs> Actually, no, I do have a prize. Everybody's just bringing She's something. Like, so. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, real quick, we have some CE classes coming up. If you see the very first one on there, the solar class, the date is wrong and the QR code is wrong on there as well. So <laughs> I've printed out different flyers. I will pass those out. If you guys need help signing up, let me know. We also have a divorce class that's being taught by Ricky Byte from Epic at the Summerlin office, and then we have a FHA MBA loan class that's going to be at the Green Valley office. You will get that at all three classes, but the ones with Epic lending, you do have to pay ten dollars for a donation to the Wounded Warrior Pro Project. Oh. And I'm putting the link to sign up for that on the Close Facebook group pages. So if you do want to sign up for the Epic classes coming up, we've got lots of seats open. Um, please support Epic. It's CE. But yeah, we definitely want to fill some out, so. Okay. So I'll go ahead and pass this out. Please sign up. This one's the correct date and the right QR code, okay? <laughs> and I thought it was pretty fitting since we're talking about open houses today, right? Who's seen this bag before? <laughs> so I am going to give this to somebody who's doing an open house this weekend, but we wanted to remind you guys that we do open house packages for you. There's a reason why we do a display at an open house right? You put yeah, lots of marketing material out and not only brand yourself, but we do give you a nice packet full yeah. of stuff. Nice. And what it is, a lot of flyers, utility cards, our buyer's guides. And what's nice is there's a lot of talking points in here. How to title Nevada, who pays what, especially if you have a new uh, home buyer who's never been through the process. So please reach out, you guys, if you're having an open house. I would love to put this together for you. You do get the bag as well. There's some coasters in there. There's some pens, pads of paper, etc. So it is reusable. You won't, might not go through all of this in one weekend, and you can save it and use for another weekend. So please let me know. Give us a little bit of time. We do need about two days before the weekend hits because we do get bombarded closer to Fridays. So who's doing an open house this weekend? Okay, I saw two hands. I'm gonna have one come in the run for you. Oh, we're gonna switch to Darshana. So there, there's your prize for today. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. I did request just listed flyers from the other house. Oh, and that's another thing that I add to that is we are gonna do a stack of flyers for you from list reports. <laughs> That's coming. That's coming. It's coming. Um, Jackie was actually going to be here today. She is in our customer service department and does all of that property profile and farming. Um, we will do a stack of flyers for the open house. So there'll be open house flyers as well as the signing sheet. Where can we get the, uh, the phone number, that card with all the utility the cards? Yes. Just send me a little email. And okay, I'll just send you. Yeah, just tell me how many you want. Okay, thank okay. you. You guys have any questions for me? Anything else related to Title and Escrow? Yes, okay, so that was part of our business plan for this year, is bringing on CE, right? A lot of it's gonna be at the Rock office down the street on the Russell. Who has not been there? Okay, so we'd love to see you guys for a lot of different reasons other than CE, but definitely wanna have you sign up for CE. If you have questions, just come to me, but I'm gonna to try to post everything in the closed Facebook group. Cool. Okay, thank you. You're All right, thank you. thank you very much. All right. We're going to talk all about open houses now. So, just to let you know that when I moved to Utah in 2013, um, I didn't know anyone there. So, my main source of getting business was doing open houses. So, I'm going to share with you uh, pretty much everything that I did uh, for my open houses to get business. And I've got a lot of business doing open houses. <clears throat> There's really more than one way to do an open house. I mean, you can you can pick a home today to hold open Saturday and take five signs out there and put them up, and, and you may or may not have a, a successful open house, and that's fine. Um, what I'm going to show you is something, there's a lot more that, that goes into doing the successful open house. And you can do anything in between. You can do everything I'm teaching you or just uh, pick a handful of things that I'm, I'm teaching you or just do the, you know, pick a house, put five, five signs up and, and you know, sit in. Um, but you know, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to have a successful open house. So let's first talk about the benefits of having an open house. Now there's, there's gonna be agents out there. 
I'm sure you've all heard it already that open houses don't work. And you know what, with that kind of mindset, open right. houses don't, don't work. work. They it's won't work. work. So you gotta keep the, the positive mindset. But one of, the one of the main benefits of doing an open house is lead generation. You can get more buyers, and mo most people think that's all you can get from open houses is buyers, but you can get sellers as well. So the number one benefit is uh, lead generation exposure. Now I don't mean take your clothes off or anything <laughs> like that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you're you're doing it wrong, Justin. No, no wonder why you're not having. That open house sucks. Yeah, I bet it did. Exposure. So you're exposing yourself, not that way, Justin. You're exposing yourself. You're getting your name out there, um, and you're also exposing the the listing. So if it's your listing, even better. Uh, so it's uh, lead generation, exposure. If done properly, they're a great use of your time. Yep. Great use of your time, meaning it's your office for that day. Yeah. You've got to bring work to do. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't bring work to do, you'll end up having a, a really boring open house with no one through. It was always, always, always happened. When I failed to bring work to do, I, I would have a boring open house. When I bring work to do, I'd have a busy open house and not get any of the work done. Um, and and uh, that, that's okay, that's not a bad problem to have. So you bring work to do. Worst case scenario, you got lots of, of work or practice stuff. Uh, attitude is everything on your open house. You gotta go in with a mindset that I'm going to have a successful open house. Don't listen to those agents that say that open houses don't work, because they do, I can tell you. I, and I have a lot of agents that have, have told me that the successes that they have had with open houses, they absolutely <clears throat> work. Uh, know that your open house is going to be productive, plan, prepare, and know the property and the market. Here's an important one. Dress professionally. You know, you are basically, you are on a job interview. You're on a job interview with the buyers. You're on a job interview with potential sellers. Dress professionally. I had, uh, years ago, I had a small team, and I had a listing that was in uh, Summerlin three bedroom, two bath. The uh, seller, his, he was a captain in the Air Force. So, you know, very strict military um, officer. And I got one of, my, um, one of my agents to do the open house. Not only was he late, which is the, the worst thing for uh, military, he was late and he was dressed sloppily. So, and I had no idea this was going on at the end of the open house. I called my client up and I just, just checking in to see how everything, oh, he was pissed. He said, Mark, you get up here right now. So I had to go up there and listen to him, you know, rant and rave. So dress professional. <laughs> um, let's talk about selecting the right property. So there's a lot of different ways to select the property. Uh, you want to be in a location that you're comfortable with. <clears throat> you want to be in a, a, a price point that you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable working with million dollar sellers, million dollar clients, um, then don't do a million dollar uh, open house. I, we had an agent a few years ago, a brand spanking new agent decided to do uh, an open house. It's like a $1.2 million open house, and felt comfortable. Um, and this is, this is a story of how open houses absolutely work. He did the open house, had a, a, a couple from, I think, North Carolina come through. They loved the house and, and said, you know, this is the first house in Las Vegas we've seen. We can't buy the first house. So he went out and showed them about four or five more houses. They went back and said, we want to write an offer on that first house. So uh, and, and $1.1 million, that was the final uh, sales price. So, but you've got to feel comfortable. If you're not comfortable, then, then do it in a price point that you feel more comfortable. Your own listing. Whenever possible, have uh, your own listing um, open. And then uh, if you don't have any listings, 
go into our Facebook group. You know, all the time there's agents in there that say, I'm looking to do, I'm looking for someone to do an open house or just post in there say, hey, um, I, I'm uh, looking to do an open house. Um, so um, just research. How else can you find um, homes to hold open? MLS. MLS? Yeah, does it have to be a Realty One agent? A Realty One listing? No, it doesn't. Now, I'm finding Realty One is more likely to say yes. You're probably 75% of them will say yes. Whereas if you reach out to outside companies, it's more like 25% of that will say, what's that? True. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's okay. Brenda. So does our insurance cover it? Right. What, what sort of insurance you got? Our E and O insurance? Yeah. E and O only kicks in if there's a lawsuit. Okay. Okay. Relevant. Yeah. yeah. Now, if it, it's like a slip and fall or something, that's on the homeowner. Yeah. Does, isn't there? Yeah. Doesn't the um, agency, the ambiguity with agency, if other companies are doing our listings? No. 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 There's, there's no issues at all. I, I'm open posted with the other agents. I haven't been able to find a real estate thing, a realty one open house. So mm -hmm. I've done all the other agents. Yeah. Open house. Are they open? I just yeah. prefer and our company. Our sign. I just reach, I just reach yeah. out to the list. You're not changing the for sale sign, oh, but but you use the open house signs. Absolutely. Reach out to I did a blast for houses. open houses, and um, I got most of my agents are out of. Green Valley that we started, yeah. so, which is fine. I'd rather have our office. Here's an important one. Invest in personalized yard signs, or, or uh, open house signs, I should say. As many as possible. So years ago, um, I, I was uh, managing an office and I had an agent that was um, being very successful on open houses. Howard was his name. And I had him come in and do a class uh, for my agents. And he said the, the best thing for getting people through were the signs. And, and he found, you know, originally he had five signs that he put out. And, and after he made a sale or two, he bought some more signs and, and just kind of saw that he's getting more people through his open house. So he invested more money in his business and bought more signs. And he, he found, he said that it's directly proportional, the number of signs you put out to the number of people that you have. And um, this was 20 years ago. Um, NAR came out with a, a study. Um, you guys want to share what you're talking about? Talking about personalizing. <laughs> it was a tall conversation. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, personalized signs are, are, are super important. And the more, the better. When I was doing um, open houses in um, in uh, Utah, I had 50 signs. I had 50 oh. signs that, and that I worked. didn't always put out 50 signs, but I had that many. I invested uh, in, in our business. Um, here's the thing. Open houses are a lot of work. And I just heard yesterday uh, an agent say, you know, I love doing open houses, I just hate putting out the signs. Um, it's a lot of work putting out, you know, especially if you're putting There's out. There's a company out there that, that, that probably does work, though, yeah. with so many signs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it really draws people in, like, maybe have 10 here, 10 yeah. here. And, and, and watch, and, and when, when people come through your, your open houses, ask them, what have they heard about the open house? And probably 75% are going to say the, the signs. So, uh, signage is are important. Did you get a lot of them stolen? Sometimes, yeah. I, maybe I'm getting ahead of you here. Probably. But how do you feel about like door hangers in the neighborhood yeah. the week prior? To We're going to talk about that. All right. Big, big time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, lots of signs. Personalized. Have your name, your phone number on them. Because what happens is you start going out to listing appointments and they start saying things like, yeah, I see your signs everywhere. Right. They don't correlate that they're seeing open house signs. They're just seeing, they're, they're thinking signage. So they're thinking, you know, you have a lot of listings because we see your signs everywhere. So personalized signs are really important. 
and as many signs as possible. Um, we used to hang, you know, put helium balloons on all the signs. It was it was a pain in the ass. It really was. It was a lot of work. I uh, years ago I had an agent come to me and, and say that uh, you know he wanted some coaching, and he said you know my 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 business is off. And I said well, okay, well, what'd you do for business before? He said well, open houses. I said well great, do more open houses. And you know what his response was? It's too much work. Uh, too I know much. things are a lot harder. I'll tell you, open <laughs> houses are a lot of work. But on the signage, just be aware, some of the HOAs have high restrictions. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's Five talk signs. about that right now. Yeah. So HOAs I do have, signs. that's on the, the, the slide deck, but yeah. So you've got to know the, the HOA rules, and not mm -hmm. only the HOA rules, but the, some the of the cities yeah. um, have rules as well. Uh, the only one I know of is is uh, Henderson. Well, I'll Henderson I'll has well, that's not a city, but yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a, sorry. That's a HOA. Okay. So Henderson has uh, five five, uh, five. signs, mm -hmm. and they fine you for every sign that you go over. It's like a hundred and something dollars per sign. Yeah, years ago I saw someone post on Facebook a picture of the ticket he got. He had like 15 signs out, oh um, so his, his tickets are like $1,000 Wait, Mark, what do you mean by that? Henderson? City yeah. of Henderson. City of Henderson. So five. There's maximum five signs on an open house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. City of Henderson. So City of Henderson. If you're up on the Rice Bridge, if you're in King Valley, if you're, when you say Is it city Henderson? Of, is it the City so of Henderson? Early? If it's in the City of Henderson, okay. there is that, that, that rule, that law, I should say. So Aliante, you can't have any sign, and I didn't know that, had a sign right on the corner, mm -hmm. two sections, mm -hmm. but that corner was Aliante, whereas across the street wasn't. They, they threw my sign away. Yep, same, same. I mean, there's a lot of communities. Mm -hmm. Roads Ranch, no signs. Mm -hmm. um, Desert Shores, no signs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of the communities just, just no. Um, you know, and how do you know? Uh, Interesting. You mean even the call the HOA. Call the HOA. The inside of Roads Ranch or the outside? There are no signs in Roads Ranch. Not even a for sale sign. Right. So the best is to call the HOA. Right. Yep. 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 So not even. Not even. So when you're not necessarily like permission. Just yeah, what are absolutely. what are your rules? Right. Mark, do you know anything about the lake? I don't know anything about the lakes. Because we went to do an open house and all of them disappeared. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't know about every single. So that's part of your planning. Time. So when yeah, you're call, call, the, call the HOA. Uh, your farm area. If you're farming, do as many open houses in your farm as possible. So, vacant or occupied? Vacant. Vacant or occupied? Who likes to do occupied? Um, open houses. Furnished, <laughs> as long as the TV, there's a TV and there's a good uh, Laker game on, I'm good with that. Um, so yeah, there, there's uh, yeah, benefits, yeah, I didn't mention the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the bacon game. That's why I always have cameras. Oh. And then, Typically. Mark, I don't know if you've said this before, but then some require, they allow signs, but they require their custom signs. So, or, yeah. like Cadence, I had yep. to make their sign with their yep. card. Right. Yep. There, I was in Sky Canyon, and they had all their so again, just yeah. you know, reach out to the associate. I can't know them all. I, I don't. Um, so yeah, there's there's benefits to vacant and occupied. Um, if you're doing a vacant home, um, bring a, a table and chairs. You know, the card table and, and chairs to be able to sit on yourself. I don't know how many open houses I did. I was sitting on the stairs because I didn't have a. Uh, uh, you know, it's vacant home and there's no furniture in there. Uh, not very comfortable for, for three plus hours. Um, so here's here's another thing um, that you can do on vacant, but never ever do this on an occupied. Never do this. So this is just a, a, one of these um, science, boards, science, yeah, science fair board. project board. And you put whatever you want on. And we just do this one together real quick for demonstration purposes. But you like you full homes, two-story homes, single-story homes, you know, uh, large lot homes, whatever. 
you can have more than one of these sitting in, in, the, uh, um, in the house too. But again, don't do this for an occupied, because a, a, a seller's gonna come home and say, you're just trying to sell every other home out there. What, <laughs> what about my home? Right. So, so uh, th the reason yeah. why we do this is <coughs> you want to keep that that lead in the house as long as possible. The longer they're in that house, the more opportunity you have to build rapport. And that is your goal is to build rapport. Actually, your, your goal, your main goal is to set appointments. And you should have a, a goal going in, I'm gonna set X amount of appointments, one appointment, two appointments, four appointments, whatever it is. Your goal is to set appointments. Secondly, your goal is to gather their information. You know, you want their name, email, address, phone number, so that you can put them in your database and you can market to them. So on the seller oh, um, occupied, what I do, I still have my cork board, but I do like um, a vicinity, what's in the area, um, interest rates. So you still could provide material that's not adverse to the seller, that's, so that's the people that come through could still hang around. Okay, so it's a quarter after 10 right now. There's no way I'm gonna get all of this, rest of this information in 15 minutes. So with your permission, can we go a little long? Yeah. Maybe uh, 15 yeah, yes. minutes or so? What all else? right. Absolutely. So weekends versus weekdays. Typically, here we do, you know, Saturdays and Sundays for open houses, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, that's where, where I see the most signs out there. Um, when I was doing open houses before I moved to Utah, 90% of my open houses here in Vegas were Sundays, typically 11 to 2 or something like that. Um, then I moved to Utah, and no business gets done on Sundays. Right. <laughs> so all my open houses were on Saturdays when I moved to Utah. Uh, but weekdays can be very productive as well. Think of this. If you have a, uh, a home that's like right down the street from a, 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 a an elementary school, hold the open house for an hour, you know, from from one to two or whenever, you know, the school lets up. There's a lot of car traffic through, so you're you're likely to get some some of those uh, come into the open house. And then, you know, in this town, all the tip industry positions, you know, they work, they make their yep. money on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So, yep. you know, they're off, they're not very busy, right? Mm -hmm. So you, they're off on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they've got money to buy houses. Okay, your open house kit, what I did is I had a, a, a tub that had a lot of this stuff in there. So I, uh, clearly the open house signs didn't fit in the tub, but I had a lot of open house signs. I had, like I said, I had 15. Um, you want to put your business cards in there. Area info, get with Rock Title. Those, those folders they have are, are awesome. But here's the thing is, you want to personalize as much of that to you as possible. Um, if you can personalize it, or, or at the very least, just staple your business card on everything. So when they take something, they have uh, your information. Um, buyer handbooks, again, Rock Title um, has some great buyer handbooks. Um, any personal marketing material, maybe you have a, a personal brochure or something, um, if you don't, you can go into a de our design center and there's some great templates for personal brochures. Um, property disclosures, if they're available. Home warranty stuff. <laughs> Home warranty stuff, yes. Uh, you know what, I, I threw this in there. I don't necessarily agree with this anymore. I used to do it years ago where you, you, you give an evaluation sheet to somebody coming through and they, I, I, yeah, I'm just not a fan of that anymore. But I am a fan of this, Spacio. Get, get, a ta get your tablet, get your laptop, put Spacio on it. You're gonna find Spacio in our, in our one zone. And what it is, is as opposed to somebody signing in on a piece of paper like this, they sign in into Spatio. Name, email address, phone number. <coughs> if there's Wi-Fi. I mean, if there's Wi-Fi, you're right. No, it, uh, no, you no. don't have to have, if you download it, you don't have to have Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. A lot of these, I can't read. 
<laughs> right. You guys are sloppy. Yeah. But you know, so and, and it's the same thing when people are, are signing in. Yeah. I used to think they did it just because so they, they do. don't they do. want right. they don't want like other them. people to see their information. Ah. So sure. somebody told them that me that a while back. Yeah. It just made complete right. sense. Is You're right. Is oh, yeah. connected to one zone, so it automatically it's in, in, No. No. It's good. Completely yeah. private between me. But here's okay. here's yeah. Will it kick back if they do a fake email? No. <laughs> no. So, but here's the thing. We should have a drinking game every time I say here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I say it a lot. Uh -huh. um, but on Spacio, they put their name, email address, phone number in there. It goes into the database. Here's the cool thing: at the end of your open house, it automatically emails them. You know, thank you so much for coming to my open house at 129 Elm Street. Has yeah, well, has a nice picture nice. of the house. Um, and if this house didn't work for you, I could uh, find you the right house. Um, well, yeah. This is really important that they get something immediately. Well, I'm actually text them or they, no. they, they didn't email. 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 Just email. Yep. Um, you may have to actually pick up your phone and text them mm -hmm. manually. Um, but yeah, so this is something I, I learned from Tom very years ago that that you know what what a lot of agents do is you know after their open house they pack everything out maybe on Monday they'll go back to the office and do handwritten note cards and put their cards in put it in they're not getting anything for like a week after the open house I think the handwritten note cards are great but they need to get something immediately. Um, so that email that goes out, I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, automating as much as possible. So uh, Spacio, I'm, I'm a big fan. And when I was in Utah, I actually, I didn't have Spacio, but I had a similar app, and I, I actually beta tested it back and forth. You know, when, one week I'd use the, uh, the handwritten, and I got a lot more people actually sign in on the, uh, on the tablet. Bottle waters are cool. Table and chairs if you're vacant. Flashlight, I don't know why. Pens are important. All right, this is probably the most important part here is the promotion of your uh, open house. So you chose the home that you're uh, holding open, um, but the promotion to get people through. Again, the signage is the best way, but all this other promotion you're doing not necessarily to get people into the open house, although it kind of is. It really is, you know, we're in the sales business, right? We need to get face to face to people. So, and, and um, that's how you generate leads, is getting face to face. So, um, important that you preview, if it's not your listing, preview the listing first. You gotta know uh, uh, something about the house. Um, how many signs and where? Drive the neighborhood, figure out, I'm gonna put signs here, here, here. You can even take a look at a map and, and kind of map out because I've actually lost signs because I forgot where I put them. Um, so how many signs, where? Get sign permission. Like, I've never done one, so where do you put the signs? Like on the sidewalk? Yeah, that's like a great question, the... it really is. So you wanna start at a, a, a a fairly busy intersection, and you just put you guide them into the subdivision. Sometimes you're in, uh, you know, on the side. <coughs> sometimes you're, you're. Sometimes you're in people's yards, right. and that's what you need to get people to get the sign permission. Uh, and just you just knock on doors. Hey, I'm mean, gonna have an open house over here um, Saturday from one to three, and I was hoping to be able to put a directional sign. Right there in the corner of your house, if it's all right with you. I would also uh, say check the weather. Check the weather is important. Yeah. Because if it's a windy day here in Vegas, yeah. you don't want to do yeah. it. Um, so, <laughs> one time I was, uh, I got knocked on a door to get signed permission. Um, he says, Yeah, no problem. You, know, you can put it right there. And then I did the open house. Uh, this was on a Thursday, I think. I, I knocked on Thursday or Friday. Did the open house on Saturday, and um, he said, "Yeah, that's that's no problem." At the end of the open house, this dude comes into my open house, and he says, "Mark, I've been watching you. You're, you work really hard, don't you?" I said, "Yeah, I work hard." 
He goes, well, I have a home to sell. I want you to sell it. Just like that. Oh, yeah. Just because I knocked on the door to get signed permission. Sure. You know, it's, it's all about getting face to face with people. So signed permission. Uh, and we talked about this, know that the, the laws and, and the uh, HOA rules and regulations. Uh, preview the surrounding available properties is kind of important because if you get somebody through, maybe you have a three bedroom, two bath home that you're holding open and they say, I love this neighborhood. I really like the house, but I'm really looking for a four bedroom. Um, you could say, you know what? I was just in a four bedroom right around the, the corner. Um, so you can you know, schedule an appointment to show them the four bedroom. Um, call your rock title rep for the address, phone number, list of this subdivision. All right, call, email doorknob, doorknob. So what I did is I created um, door hangers and there were personalized door hangers to that home, that, that, that uh, day and time, um, and I had 200 of them made up prior to every open house. Where did you get them made up? This was in Utah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, my sister owned a printing company. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're a lot of stuff. So you got those for a very low cost. She, no, she is, do you think I'm cheap? That's funny. She still charged me. Yeah, I was going to say, she got, probably got a commission for me. She, but, but her husband, um, Scott, he, he designed them for me. They're really great looking, you know, the, the picture of the property, the date, the time the open house was. And the reason why, and, and my goal was to door knock 200 homes, 200 homes prior to every single open house. I knew that if I just had a generic, you know, uh, open house flyer, um, you know, maybe I wouldn't do 200 homes. But I had these 200 that I paid for, and remember I'm cheap, um, that I would have to get, and it's not like, and I always tell agents all the time, they're, they're like, oh yeah, I'm just door hanging. I'm like, you're at the freaking door, not going to go out. Ring the door. So many people well, have what, do you, what do you feel about the they don't answer the door? I don't like to leave the hanger on the door. Mm -hmm. They have a handle on the garage. I'll put it on the garage. Yeah. Nobody goes to their front door. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Nobody goes to their front door anymore. They go through the garage. So yeah, I'm, I'm fine either way. Um, but what would I say when I door knock? Hi, I'm having an open house on so and so. Just thought I'd introduce myself and invite you to come and see us. That's kind of what I said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Mark with Realty One Group. I'm having an open house over here at 123 Elm Street Saturday between the hours of uh, 11 and 2. And I'm just out talking to the neighbors because oftentimes neighbors know somebody that wants to move into the neighborhood. So who's the next person that you can think of that would like to move in the neighborhood? It's a perfect opportunity to choose your, your, uh, your next neighbor. And then shut up. Let them, you know, whenever you say who's the next person you can think of, they kind of go through their mental Rolodex. Whereas if you just say, hey, having an open house, come on by, they say, okay, get out of here. No. You know? okay. But who's the next person that you can think of? Perfect opportunity to choose your next neighbor. Nine times out of ten, they're going to say, you know, I can't think of anybody. And what do you say then? Well, thank you for thinking about it. I really appreciate it. Again, Open house, one to three, Saturday. Come on by, I'm gonna have some some uh, refreshments for you. And here's the thing, take a drink. Um, you're really there for, for a, another reason as well. You're there to invite them to the open house or, or they think of somebody that they can invite as well. But you also, you wanna get sellers, don't you? You would like to find out if, if they would like to sell their home. So what you do is, I, who knows who Columbo is? <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah. so Columbo was a show uh, back in the 70s, and Columbo was a disheveled detective. 
And when he would be asking questions of his main suspect, who he knew was guilty, he would just be a asking them real softball, easy questions. And then, uh, you know, okay, thank you. And he'd kind of turn away. And the suspect was like, and, and, and I got away with it. And it's, he turns back, and by the way, and that's when he hits them with the hard question because people let their guard down. Most people can't spontaneously lie. Although Justin over here is <laughs> <He's> very handsome. <laughs> See, he's good at it. <laughs> so uh, people have a hard time spontaneously lying. Um, so it's you know they use the same thing. You you know think of um, you know having the open house. Oh, oh by the way, when do you plan on moving? Just like that. Oh by the way, when do you plan on moving? And then shut up. Again, just shut up. Listen to what they say. More importantly than listen to what they say is how they act. You know, if they pause a little bit or look up, you know, it, it, they're thinking about it. And you can come right back and say, it kind of sounds like you thought about it. If you were to move, where would you go? It kind of sounds like you thought about it. If you were to move, where would you go? And then... Um, you didn't listen to their answer. You know, actually, we had talked about moving to Minnesota and be closer to the grandkids or whatever. And, and you're just asking questions at that point. That's what sales is. It's asking questions and listening to their answers. Don't have the <coughs> diarrhea of the mouth like a lot of salespeople do. Just talk, talk, talk. You have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Mm -hmm. So you can listen twice as much as you talk. Ask the question. Listen to the answer, because that's going to help you formulate the next question. So that's. <coughs> did that sound like a script? Uh, no, no. It is. It sounds a like you care, actually. I, You're yeah. interested. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it is a script, and I've probably said that thousands of times, yeah. and it's probably never the same twice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just you know, it, it's how I feel at that point. And, and, and kind of gauge the interest of the, the person you're talking to as well. Um, invite your, your COI, your circle of influence, also SOI, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it, part of working your database, which is what I'm teaching next Friday, um, is touching your database on a regular basis. And this could just be one touch to your database, it's a reminder that, hey, I'm, I'm in real estate, I'm still here, and if you know of anybody, you know, this is the open house I'm doing next week. Um, coordinate order, so I would only do an open house every other week, um, only because of, you know, I had to order the, uh, the door hangers, I had to order postcards because I sent out postcards. Um, in the neighborhood as well. Um, I had to order the, uh, the call list um, from Rock Title, um, invite, circle process, we talked about that. Post it. Post your open house to as many online portals as possible. Again, probably 75% of your people are gonna come from the signs, but this is uh, important as well because a lot of people are, are looking online. Um, post it in the MLS. If it's not your listing, have the listing agent uh, post it in the MLS. So if you post it in the MLS, it automatically gets notified on Zillow. Really? Yes. So you do that. the you go to edit, add, edit. You go to your listing. Go to open houses. You've got to make sure that you pick public. And uh, there's another question <coughs> to the right. You have to say yes so that it's syndicated. As soon as you do that, it will show on Zillow. Yes, yeah. you're correct. Love it. MLS, post to your website, advance notice sign writers. So this is something I did. So some of these signs have like a place on the top that you can put a, a sign writer into it. And I made a sign writer that said, open Saturday from one to four, one to three, whatever it is. And that would sit out in front of the house for a full week before the open house. So people driving by would see, oh, that, that one's gonna be, you know, maybe we need to come back 
um, on Saturday. The division so, has, uh, not the division, the association has open Saturday, open Sunday, sign writers that you could hang on your mm -hmm. sign in front of the property. So yeah, the advance notice uh, is, is really good. Uh, advance notice flyers, create a video announcement, put it on your social media, boost ads on Facebook. Personally, I had never had any, um, you know, with boosting ads, no success at all. I know agents that do. So, um, like, who's that? James that came in a while back from Green Valley, and, and uh, he was at one of our meetings, and that's what he does. He boosts ads and has had uh, a lot of success boosting ads. Um, prepare information packets, like what. Uh, uh, rock title was showing, property flyer. So this is all stuff that you want to have at the open house. You want to have as much stuff there spread out on all the counters. Again, personalized to you, your business, either personalized or staple your business cards to it. Um, and why do we do that? For two reasons. A, you want them to stay in that house as long as possible. The longer they're in there, the more opportunity that you have to build rapport. And if they take stuff home, um, they're going to have your contact information on there. So um, you know, I used to just spread piles of stuff all over the, the counters and have the, those uh, boards. All right. I talk a lot about this. It's the safety of... The agents. It really weighs very heavy on me. Um, so, you know, consider a partner for safety. That that partner could be a spouse, it could be a teenage son, it could be a, a, a lender, a title rep. Um, it doesn't matter. It could be another agent. But here's the thing. Um, if it's another agent, Make sure you have some sort of agreement yes. in writing mm -hmm. on how you're going to handle all of those leads that come exactly. in. It's right. either you take the first, I'll take the second, you know, back and forth, or we're going to split everything that comes out of the uh, open house. Um, it doesn't doesn't matter to me what your agreement is. The only thing that matters to me is it's that you right. have an agreement and you have an agreement in writing. Because what's going to happen is, you know, somebody's going to get mad. Exactly. And what happens? You both come to me, and I've got to mediate it somehow. And if you don't have something in writing, someone's not going to be happy. Usually, both people aren't going to be happy if I have to get involved. So um, just make sure that you have it in writing. Um, so would you think the way to give it to somebody else? Like, <laughs> I did that. I did I've that. done that before. Yeah. I know. I've done that before. Yeah. Uh, again, if I get involved, someone's not going to be happy. Uh, if if you if you don't have anybody there at the open house, have somebody, spouse, whatever, um, friend, know where you're at, address of where you're at. The times you're going to be there, have an arrangement to check in with that person um, every hour, uh, and have some sort of code that if you call them and text them and mention this code word, it could be the brown file or whatever, then uh, it, that, it alerts that person that you need help. And the easiest thing, just share your location with one person. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, Somebody. absolutely. I, I don't know about third-party apps or anything, but I know that the most recent iPhone update came with this new feature that allows you to set a check-in with somebody, mm -hmm. and you have to check in periodically, or that person gets a notification that okay. something that something yeah. is not right, right, and they can then follow up with you. Mm -hmm. So you can set it to whatever you want. Once an hour, you just click I'm okay, whatever, but it gives somebody else knowledge and it's automatic. So if something happens to you, it automatically sends that message. Is it upsetting? Uh, let me Probably get back to you on that. I saw it in the new, like the release notes for the new update. 
Here's I could if I had Facebook, which I do not. Uh -huh. So here's something else. Uh, what was his name that was in Dan. there? Just Dan. Dan. He, and, and this is something that, that he gave to me, and they're just signs. This one says, please be advised this property is being audio and video recorded. You may or may not have a camera in there, but you know what? You put that in there and it's going to, you know, uh, more to stop. Please be advised this property is, is being audio and video. Or, you know, get, get fake cameras right. and put them in there. Or get real cameras and put them in there. Uh, but yeah, this, this is just going to help I keep you safe. Linda. So for us ladies, I mean, we want to get all dressed and wear heels. I made it a practice to wear flats, have my phone in the back pocket, have my key, carry a pen. You leave your purse in the car hidden so that if you have to make a mad dash, you're not scrambling to find and you're not leaving your credit cards, IDs. Just be minimal as possible and be Love just it. prepared yep. to escape if you have to. When you're showing the home, don't enter the room first and drift yes. after. Let the client, because if, if you go in first, you know, they're there at the door and they can block you in. So and there's when you when you park at the house, don't park in the driveway because they can pull up behind you and block you and park across the street. Um, on the street. We should all have an alarm around our neck. He gave me a link to an alarm that you can buy that you just press the button. Have an alarm. Have, a, have, have pepper spray. Have you know. And I always what, carry whatever. a pen. You know, when I'm showing, I just carry a pen because. That yep. could be a weapon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So always, you know, and he mentioned it as well, situational awareness. Mm -hmm. Always be aware of what's going on around you yeah. so that you're just careful. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's talk about the day of the open house. Arrive early. Memorize the lights, doors, windows. You want to return the house to the way uh, it was when you got there. A lot of sellers are, are, are great at, you know, opening all the blinds up, having all the lights on, but some aren't. Um, you know, just, you know, sometimes I've had, I've gone to uh, open houses and there's been dirty dishes in the sink. Um, and literally, I pull those dishes out, put them in the dishwasher to hide them, and then at the end of the open house, what do I do? Pull them out, put them back in. You know, I've had to pick up dog. Do do. That's why they can spend. But, but typically, I wouldn't put that back. Uh, <laughs> but they just make the house uh, kind of presentable, um, and, and just go through it with a discerning eye. And you want to, make, you know, because the the client is going to be walking through as well. You know, fluff up the pillows, that sort of uh, stuff. Uh, lights, windows, throw pillows, magazines. Uh, oh. High valuables, yes. super important. There's, uh, there's, I, I get it. There's women that have very expensive bags. I'm looking at Rocio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, four, five, six thousand dollar bags. Where's, where's Kathy? Where's Kathy in here? Yeah, I would be looking at her too. Um, if, if that's the case, make sure those things are hidden. There, right. there was something in the news a few years ago about um, these uh, young adults, maybe you know, 19, 20 year olds. There was like four or five of them that went into a house and they, they checked it out and walked around and, and left and they came back. And, and a couple of them actually um, took the, uh, um, the, the agent into the backyard because they have questions about the pool or whatever, and the others went upstairs and started grabbing the bags and red sole shoes. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and, they, and, and the, the, the uh, agent suspected something was up, and so came in as they were coming down, and, and really she chased him out of the house, which she shouldn't have, have done. But luckily the ring camera caught them and um, they were uh, they were arrested later on. So um, yeah. Wow. All right, ready set action. Um, when they come in the house, first question I'd always ask them. So what home in the neighborhood do you live in? 
especially if, if, if it's a home that's the, the first time it's been held open in, in a long time, you know, because there's a lot of uh, nosy neighbors or, you know, interested neighbors, I should say. So, you know, what's, what's, uh, what's, which home in the neighborhood do you live in? And uh, ask them to sign in on space, you know. So when, when you ask them, you know, which home, or when you're having discussions with them, um, you want to find out if they are a prospective buyer um, or, and or do they have a home that they're going to need to sell as well. Because your questions for a potential seller are different. Also, are they a renter or are they a homeowner? If they're a renter, there's all, all, all sorts of different uh, questions to ask them. What are some of the questions that you would ask a renter? Have you ever bought a home before? Have you ever bought a home before? That's a great one. When does your lease expire? When does your lease expire? Are you actively looking to purchase a home? Have you been pre-approved? Have you been pre-approved? That's a good one. Yeah. Um, what's, what's your rent? Yeah. All great questions. If they're a homeowner, what's the best question to ask? How long do you need to sell this property? How long do you own it? Do you need to sell before? Fine. Are you are, sitting are, on are, equity? Are, are, you, are you looking <laughs> for Are you looking for owner occupied or are you looking for an investment? Mm -hmm. yeah. so there's all sorts of great questions. Yeah, there's a great book. If you're readers, it's called uh, The Secrets of Question Based Selling, I think is and I don't remember who the author is. Um, the Secrets of Question Based Selling. It's a great, great book. Um, let them explore. Here's, so this is, I could go either way on this. Let them explore on their own or walk them through the house. So if it's a home that you are very familiar with, maybe it's your listing, and maybe there's some things that you want to highlight, you know, walk them through. Yeah. Um, if it's, you know, if you have, you know, six, eight, ten people through the house at the same time, you know, just let them, let them walk through. Another thing that I want to uh, backtrack a bit on um, hiding valuables. Also, medication in the medicine cabinet. There are people that go through the open houses just to steal drugs. Hmm. Who was that actor from Friends? Matthew, Matthew? Uh, Perry. Matthew Perry. He, 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 before he died, um, he wrote a book about his addiction. And that's one thing that he said. He went through open houses just to steal the drugs, the medication. He's not the only one who's thought of that. Um, so make sure that uh, uh, if it's your listing, talk to your sellers about uh, you know hiding all that. Um, <clears throat> Watch and listen, ask questions. Again, parties who own, you have uh, questions. Parties who rent, you have different questions. Spacio, important. Uh, call to make appointments. You know, I got nothing else here. After the open house is really important. Last thing I'm going to say. The porch is in the follow up. You spend all this time generating these leads. You know, it could be you're off door knocking. It could be you're on the phone calling. It could be, you know, doing the actual open house. You're generating these leads. Follow up. The fortune is in the follow up. You got to follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Most uh, salespeople make one or two follow ups and then they stop. But there's, there was a study saying that most sales, 85% of all sales are made on the fifth to the 12th contact. 85% of sales are made on the fifth to the 12th contact. And most salespeople make one or two contacts. So uh, the fortune is in the follow up. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to be long. Oh, it's okay. Hope it was beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.